Hey. Something in behind the mangroves here looks like an old ant of some sort. It's honestly so bizarre. We're on a treasure hunt. We're lost. We have found fresh water. Here he goes. Yes! Yes, yes! Such a big barrel. So there's about a four meter crocodile sitting on top of our anchor line. That's absolutely terrifying. yesterday we spotted this island that's got this mangrove crack running through the middle it looked absolutely incredible we had to come have explore so we've got a hand spear Franz Manning a little popper rod we're walking through the shallows here the key species we're looking for are mud crabs mangrove jacks in the shallows and doing our best to avoid crocodiles but let's see what we can find oh yeah mullet and rabbit fish No signs of crabs. Oh, a sweet lip like an emperor. Hey, good job. Nice work. Is that flowery cod? Flowery cod, yeah. Well, oh, it's a big one, friend. Hey. Lunch is served. Lunch is served. <laughs> big greasy cod. Nice work. Having a little pop along the reef edge here. Prime flowery cod country. Oh, trout under it, he's sitting under it. Oh, did you see that? He's sitting like underneath it. Oh, I should have twitched it, bugger. Oh, yep. Yeah. Coral trout. Hey. It's a trevally, I think. He's almost in the reef. Making me do a bit of a dance. Hey oh, beautiful trolley. See you mate. So far it looks pretty amazing. We've got like white silica sand on the right hand side with palm trees. Gnarly rocks coming in here. Looks like there's a bit of a bay on the left where you could set up a camp, but we're gonna keep sort of venturing our way up. There's something in behind the mangroves here. It looks like an old camp of some sort. It looks a little bit overgrown, so we're gonna go poke our head in and see if anyone's home or see if they want to say good day. Hmm? Hello. Here goes, boys. Oh, some big giant conch shells. Hello, Hugo. Just coming to say good day. It's a cod. Oh, how, this water's so clear, I could see that all happening. Look at him here. How cool is that? That could do us for dinner, eh? Dinner. Perfect, actually. And that's almost the sunset on another day of this adventure. This is a hell of a change of scenery from where most of our time has been spent. As you can see, we're up a mangrove river, but we're so far up, it's turned into the fresh brackish water. So for Anna and myself, uh, all out of drinking water. So tomorrow, first mission is go up and get some drinking water. So these napa palms, I haven't seen these in years. In um, PNG, the rivers look very similar where I grew up. And um, up and down the rivers there, when we're fishing for black bass and mangrove jack and barra, you'd see these palms. So it's quite nostalgic. I heard they were up this river and we're so keen to check them out. But the water is still brackish, so it's still got a fair bit of salt in it. We've got to keep heading up river until we find some clear drinking water. This will eventually turn into fresh. So we're on a mission to find it. And we're gonna fill up all our water bottles and then that's good to, good to drink. So that hopefully will get us all the way to the top of Australia. Are you pulling faces? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's our lunch. We've got Trevally, cut very fine by Fran. Lemon juice for a couple of hours as ceviche. Plus a cracker. Um, as you can hear in the background, mission success. We have found fresh water. Friends, 
doing her best to wash the salt, the last two months worth of salt off. Is it nice? It's so nice. Would you drink it? Yeah, if I was desperate as we are. <laughs> so you're welcome boys, we've found some drinkable fresh water. You want to do this on a dropping tide, on a run out tide, the bottom of the run out tide, that's when all the salt water should be pushed out back out to the ocean, but unfortunately it's the complete opposite today. It's a big run-in tide, so we've had to come as far as we can up the river um, to get away from the, the flooding salt water. But man, we've come so far up. It's got like really, really tight freshwater turns, and then that's the the basically as far up in the river as we can go. There's a big log across it there. So this is as good as fresh as the water's going to get, according to France. All right. So I'm going to fill all the boys' bladders up, and hopefully it doesn't sink the salty dingo on the way back because they're. We got a few bladders there. <laughs> yeah. How is it? Is it nice? Fresh. Fresh. Well, the technique, you've got to fill up a smaller vessel to then fill up these wine casks full of water. We've just previously hooked a small finger mark from this snag here and we've gone back and done a second loop on it. We had a double hook out with a finger mark and a trevally and uh, oh, I'm really hoping this is a finger mark but it could be anything here. It's a very hard fighting trevally. Oh, it's a bigger one. All right, now we've got to race the sun down to get back to our camp. Set out the fire, cut up this finger mark, finger mark. There's uh, probably the, the main species we haven't caught yet and eaten on this adventure, so I was so stoked to get him today. We can never get out of here. This is going to be our dinner tonight. Beautiful pan sized finger mark. I just um, hadn't had a chance to catch one yet, so I was so stoked once we got, got that one today. We're going to fill it him up, sunset, and fish and chips. The colours up river here are quite different, but quite nice. More of a bush sunset than an ocean sunset, but yeah, it's pretty bloody good. We've got the salty dingo anchored out the front, and that is pretty much it. After that shitty choppy run across the channel, we're coming in and we're like, oh, we've got to catch some food. It's lunchtime. Put the gold bomber, the barrel ore out. Something big has just come and jumped on it. Check this out after that horrible ocean crossing. We've arrived at our own little sand cave. How cool is this? Very cool. It's really windy. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear me too well, but we've got to catch some lunch. We're starving. We've had to ration food pretty heavily now, in that we are we're having half a coconut for breakfast. We need to catch a fish to have raw for lunch, so let's do it. Golden Trevally, these guys are beautiful ceviche. We don't have any firewood to cook up, so uh, we're just gonna slice him thin, do him in a bit of lemon. Oh, how beautiful. Oh, that's pretty. How cool is that? Release him. Fish around this sand cave on the bottom, see if we can pick up some bottom fish. 
First drop down, beautiful little nanny guy. It's a shark. <laughs> Just dropped anchor in one of the most beautiful white sandy bays we've ever seen. Check this out, we've got white sand, palm trees. We're just doing a bit of exploring today. There's some big stingrays in the shallows here, I'll show you in a sec as well. Uh oh. So the plan today is we're gonna continue heading around. We're basically just exploring. At some point we've got to catch something from the ocean for lunch and dinner. Um, our rations are running so low, we did a bit of a calculation yesterday, we've got half a potato each every second day. Um, so yeah, needless to say, we're very much relying on catching something. But we're just going to have a bit of an explore around this bay here. Looks like there could be a bit of a structure or something here. An old hermit's camp or something. So we pulled up at this little random beach and then just behind the scrub there's these different um, plastic which as you follow the plastic forms a tiny little path as you can see here in the tree and then the next bit there and the next bit we've been led on this path for what's been now about a 15 minute walk we've got no idea where we're going to come out but you'd think it'd only like really really good useful thing to everyone that would be signed i reckon a water source of some sort this is honestly so bizarre we're on a treasure hunt oh, don't get lost in the long grass <laughs> vegetation has now changed from those mangroves and sandy beach to um, like australian outback bush we've come a fair bit inland uh, and a lot of this kind of vegetation needs a little bit of water. And the best way to find water is follow these animal paths. So these are created from pigs and cattle. And they obviously need a bit of water and then they venture on down. That's pretty cool. Termite mounds taken back over a bit of plastic. And um, we're seeing a lot of like dried up pig wallows and that sort of stuff where they use this same path. They go down to the beach, feed on the ghost crabs and stuff on the beach. And then head back out to the water source when it's dry. But it makes it a lot easier to follow when some kind gentleman has signposted it with plastic. We just don't quite know how far we're walking to or what exactly we're walking to yet. <laughs> Starting to think that it's not actually a water source, but it's this, I'm not quite exactly sure what this is, like this little pile of driftwood, but I'm not quite sure why we've been led here. We've been led astray on a path of plastic. We haven't actually found a water source or the, the big waterfall we were hoping, but I guess it's kind of cool. People put their boats names and stuff like that when they've arrived here but kind of bad timing for us because well, there's a message in a bottle. Yeah, there's some cool kind of um, driftwood and, and old float names, but the tide's dropping and where we left the boat, it's likely it's gonna be high and dry now, which is gonna stall our exploration today. But we got a little bit carried away. We thought we were gonna find some gnarly big waterfall. It was all gonna be worth it, but anyway, we're gonna try and jog back. Um, you can hopefully jog. our boat's still floating. All right. In we go. Oh, lost. How'd we go? How'd we go? Oh, we've missed the tide. We're about to get to know this bay a whole lot better. Damn it. Salty dingo is high and dry. Found a cool place to pull up next to though. I think the boat's gonna be high and dry for likely about two hours. So while it is low tide, one good thing can be done. We can go for a walk through the mangroves, look for mud crabs and oysters. All right, we've found a tiny little creek here. Uh, and at low tide, we can get right down the riverbank and cast in. We've had a few mangrove jack, follow the lures in, and Fran's had a couple of barra. So fingers crossed we can catch some food soon. Oh, they're all over it. Yeah. Oh, barra jumped and spat it. Woo, another barra. <laughs> Cutest barramundi you've ever seen or what? Tell you what, I'm gonna do you a favor, mate. There's a puddle over there full of bait fish. I'm gonna put you in there and you can go harass them until the tide comes in. So many jacks down here. I reckon that's the one I released right back under the tree in the same spot. You get it? 
So yeah, wand it in, friend. We got one. We're not going hungry for lunch. It was getting a little bit close there, casting this popper. I caught anything, I was told Fred it was going to be oysters for lunch. She hates fresh oysters, so luckily. So for lunch, Fran's got a bit of a ceviche mix going with that smaller trevally we caught. I've never tried it before, but I'm gonna throw a few fresh black lip oysters into that ceviche mix. All right, so we're in a super remote part of the country and it's one of the most picturesque places I've ever seen. Behind me here, there's backdrops of white sandy sand dunes that are just amazing. They come straight out of these back of the mangroves up to these white sand dunes. Honestly incredible. Um, and there's some little tiny creeks that are like no bigger than a normal road. But the good thing about them, in like knee deep water, they're loaded full of barramundi, jacks, cod, queenies, trevallies. It's just like a fisherman's paradise. So as you can see, the sun's high in the sky, which means it's bloody hot and it's also about lunchtime. But let's see if we can um, have a cast here and gather some tucker. This is the size of the creeks we're fishing. There's just absolutely nothing to them. There's a barra just here. Yep. Oh, he's only a little of one. How cool is that? Cape York barra in crystal clear water, sight casting. I'll just release him down here. We're away from the crocodiles. That is epic. Oh, yep. Yes. Oh, it's not a barra. It is a ugly looking cod that might just be lunch. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 that's a nicer one. That's a good barra and it's tiny little creek, eh? It's not a barra. He's made a liar out of me. It is a bigger black spot cod. That could be a perfect dinner size. These guys are a black spot estuary cod. And there's a fair few of them in this little system. Oh yes, big barra, big barra, yes! Yes, 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 that's a big one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Stay on. This is absolutely amazing. This is a, no! No, 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 no! Oh, how does that happen? Far out. It's hard to believe there's such big fish in a little system, but that was very much a plus size barramundi. Oh, bugger. That, oh, that's him, that's him. He's come up behind it, watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh, have a go with the size of him. Where did he go, where did he go? The lure just wasn't quite swimming right. Oh. Oh. It's on his nose, it's on his nose. Oh, did you see him there? He had two goes at it and then he spat it back out. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, there's one. He's a, oh, he's not a big one, but he's a barra. Yeah. yeah. That's not the big one, but it's a barra nonetheless. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Yes. Check that out. Oh, he's like, just engulfs it and then spits it straight back out. I've got a be quick on the hook set. Oh, there he goes again. See him here? He's right behind it. See him there? That same big barra just came and hit it right at the bank here. You can see that water's stirred up. Here he goes. Yes, 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 come up the beach. No, no, no. Oh, that has got to be one of the most memorable fish I've ever caught, man. That was like an ongoing battle for about 45 minutes where I saw this barra in like half a meter of water, right at my feet, like right at my feet. And he just kept eating my lure, but spitting it back out. Like he'd engulf it and spit it out. And oh, I'm just so, so thankful. I finally won that battle, man. That is such a big barra for a little creek. That was incredible, but he hit it right at my feet. And by the time he jumped, he pretty much jumped straight up the bank. Well, that was absolutely incredible. I'm gonna get this fish released quick smart. So I'm about to run out of space on my GoPro. So hopefully, we can capture a little bit of this as he swims off. It's gonna be epic. Oh, that whole barramundi, like 
session episode was just incredible how it worked out to actually see a big one like that so incredible and to have the camera rolling the whole time and then even more so to let that fish go back into that little creek like as it was cruising off the camera just died bad timing but as it was cruising off the fish just looked oversized for that little system yeah he was definitely the king of the creek and um, that one a very impressive fish so the campsite we've chosen here tonight is pretty good. We're overall pretty happy with it. The reason we've pulled in here is, as you can hear behind me, it's blowing like 25, 30 knots all night tonight. So we've got a safe spot for the boat to be anchored. But the one kind of dodgy thing about this spot and where we were last night is we're so close to the water line. This is literally the, the high tide line behind me here. And last night where we were camped with the kayak crew, there was a, a big crocodile, about a 14 foot crocodile, just stalking up and down the bank at night time. When you spotlight them, you can see their green eyes light up. And um, there was a big croc a couple of meters off where we're all camped, which is terrifying. They're just so patient and they wait for everyone to go to bed. We're gonna have to sort of wait up to make sure there's nothing creeping up into our swag. Yeah, one of the reasons we wanted to come to areas like this is it's so wild, so remote. The fishing, as you've seen today, is just um, pretty well untouched, so the fishing's so good. Scenery, the landscape is just unspoiled, but it means it's wild. You know, there's crocodiles. Just literally 10 minutes ago, we had pigs running out the front of our campsite. Anyway, in far more happier news for dinner, we have got one sweet potato. This is, we get one of these every second day. So we have half a potato each every second day. So yeah, times are tough. But we do have barramundi fillet and black spot estuary cod fillet that I'm gonna do up in a beer batter. Basically, it's pretty simple. It's just self-raising flour, a beer, mix it all together. That gives you your mixture. Chop up your fish nice in small pieces, dip it in the mixture bit of oil in your pan, straight on top of the coals, away you go. Unfortunately, we do only have one hot beer left and it's a Corona, not even a Great Northern. So otherwise, yeah, you'd be getting drunk and not, not mixed with our fish. But anyway, beggars can't be choosers in one of the most remote places in the country. It's gonna be good. Mm. Mm. It's best served in the dark to a starving person and they reckon it tastes delicious and looks great. Beer battered barramundi. Yum yum. You can see him there. Look. So close to the hole. Sure, sure. <laughs> Alright, so there's about a four metre crocodile sitting on top of our anchor line um, that goes out to the salted dingo. That's, that's absolutely terrifying. It just goes to show you if anyone sort of went swimming at night time to go grab something out of the boat, oh man, bang, it'd honestly just be all over before you knew it. We're yeah, pretty nervous at the moment. The tide's still got another hour of it coming in. So we're just constantly spotlighting out the front, just making sure that croc doesn't get any closer. But from our camp, we can spotlight and see a four metre crocodile and then behind him, in the mangroves, there's two other separate crocodiles that we can't tell their size. But this big one, he's just sitting on the bank with his mouth open and the incoming tide, I don't know whether he's catching mullet that are getting pushed into his mouth or whether he's just guarding that anchor line which is in his territory that goes out to the boat. He might not be happy with the boat. It is mating season for the crocodiles. They get super territorial and he looks like he's the big dog of this system. So I think he's just kind of eyeing off the salty dingo. Quite on edge for the next couple of hours. We'll keep his posted. That water is getting awfully close to our fire. All right, the moment we've been waiting for all night, the tide has now started to drop, which is good. It was amazing how close it got to the fire. It was literally laughing at the fire. We've had to reposition the swag three times throughout the night, but it looks like that tide started to go out and uh, means we're hopefully safe for another night. So we're gonna brush our teeth. We'll see you bright and early in the morning. <laughs> 